we're down to eight staff to support some of the most complex, some of the most challenging individuals with learning disabilities and autism um, that need familiarity, consistency, and essentially we're down to well, less than a skeleton staff team right now. The UK has recorded its highest number of daily lab-confirmed coronavirus cases since the pandemic began at 33,470. The number of deaths has not been released yet tonight. In Downing Street, the political soap opera continues. Tory MPs call for Dominic Cummings to join Lee Kane on the way out of Downing Street. The spin doctor announced his resignation last night after reports of his promotion to chief of staff was thought to have prompted anger amongst MPs, other advisers and Boris Johnson's fiance. Record economic growth from July to September, but it doesn't nearly make up for the losses of the slump caused by the first lockdown. And the crucial race still being run in America, where the runoff for the Senate seats in Georgia will determine who controls it. But many are still fighting the last war. Do you think Donald Trump won this election? Absolutely. If you look at the reporting, if you look at the voting, if you look at the numbers, he won. Not the media. Seventy percent of residents and more than half of all staff have coronavirus. And this in a care home looking after people with highly complex needs. Unable to draft in agency staff with the right expertise, the home's managers asked if asymptomatic staff could return to care for residents who've tested positive. But they were turned down. Now they simply don't know how to carry on. And they say they're not the only home in this predicament. Our health and social care editor, Victoria MacDonald, joins me now from Nottinghamshire. Victoria. We were at the old vicarage uh, near Grimsby today talking to really quite distraught managers at this home. They, uh, their staff are testing positive. They don't want to bring an agency staff because these people have very, very complex, high-level needs, and yet they don't know where to turn. They've been told by the local authority that they may have to declare themselves failing if they're to get any help. At the same time, we have a Public Health England report today talking about the excess deaths amongst people of learn with learning disabilities within the first wave of this virus. Now, some of it can be explained by underlying health conditions, but not all of it. And one expert said to us, you need these ex this expert help, all the relatives who know these people, who understand what the person with learning disability is trying to tell them if they are seriously ill. Behind the windows, a home to residents, many with highly complex needs, including learning disabilities and autism. And now a home, which Channel 4 News understands, has become the first of its kind to publicly declare they are about to run out of staff because of COVID-19. We're down to eight staff to support some of the most complex, some of the most challenging individuals with learning disabilities and autism um, that need familiarity, consistency, and essentially we're down to well, less than a skeleton staff team right now. A staff member took these pictures for us inside. The home is now a secure zone. Of the 11 residents, nine have COVID, although only two are displaying symptoms. Of the 32 staff, some are already shielding because they are highly vulnerable. And of those still working, 17 have tested positive, but only half are showing symptoms. The next 48 hours is our pinch point, essentially. We know uh, on Sunday we start to get that drip feed of people back out of isolation. But the next 48 hours is very, very tight. We recognised this late last week, which is when we started being very vocal to Public Health England, very vocal to the local authority here, saying in the next seven days this is going to reach tipping point and we don't have a solution unless you help us. The irony, they say, is they'd been testing even more regularly than they were required to because they wanted to be on top of any infection outbreak. Once we uh, discussed with Public Health England, uh, about seven days after we initially alerted the outbreak, we were told to revert back to seven day testing for the staff and revert back to 28-day uh, testing for the individuals and not as frequently as we were doing it because we were highlighting too many asymptomatic staff, essentially. They have proposed putting asymptomatic staff in a bubble with an asymptomatic resident, transporting those staff from their homes in this van, which is cleaned and screened. PHE have told them that this would be illegal and North East Lincolnshire Council say they are working with the home but they have also told the owners that, in effect, they will have to declare they are a failing service if this can't be resolved.
So what happens? So right now uh, we can't use agency. Uh, the individuals need familiarity. Some of the individuals you have to uh, like kind of wean people in. You have to like slowly put them into the home over a period of two months to get them used to an individual. So agency isn't an option. Um, so right now our staff are going above and beyond. PHE told Channel 4 News that they sympathised with the home but did not believe staff should breach any legal obligation to self-isolate. What they're having to do here is balance the risk, keeping, yes, the staff and the residents safe, but also remembering that they have highly complex needs. And we know that this is happening in other homes across the country. There is also increasing evidence that people with learning disabilities have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19. And today, a report drawing together a variety of data puts into sharp focus the grim reality of this pandemic. The PHE report figures are shocking. They show the death rate of people with learning disabilities in the first wave in England was between 4.1 and 6.3 times higher than the general population. The death rate of those aged 18 to 34 was 30 times higher than in the same group without disabilities. Were you shocked by this? I was certainly very surprised. Clearly they need to be uh, have people working with them who are acute to identifying worrying symptoms. And particularly when they get ill, people who are uh, acute to identifying when people with COVID are beginning to get seriously ill and so need more serious uh, attention which is the point they are making here. Their own crisis cannot be fixed by staff who are untrained and inexperienced, especially not in the midst of a pandemic. Victoria MacDonald reporting. Well, now earlier I spoke to the chairman of the National Care Association, Nadra Ahmed. I put it to her that the care home in Victoria's report had been put in an impossible position, trying to obey the rules whilst maintaining standards of care. We don't want to do anything that the science tells us not to do, but then we've got to find a solution to this because people need to be cared for. You can't test too often. I think we do have to test. It's the only way forward. If we can get testing right and rapid testing in place, we can know who can and can't work in those services. And I think the asymptomatic one laying aside, there will be some people who are isolating and after a few days they could come back, but because of the, um, the fact that we can't test them, we don't know that they're safe to come back to work. We've got shortages of staff. We've got real challenges around um, the, the costs of using people from outside, which most providers don't want to do. They do not want to bring in agency staff. They want to be able to recruit properly. And this is about the parity that we could have in qualification, in esteem. But the difficulty is that the crisis is now and there's no evidence at the moment that the government is actually listening to your pleas. And, and you're absolutely right, and they haven't been. Um, I think we are facing some real... Um, the, it, it, the crisis stage has passed, John. To be absolutely honest, we, we've been in this sort of crisis for quite some time. The pandemic has highlighted it, and it's created this perfect storm. And in the event that uh, the lockdown is either extended or that another one is put into place later on, will you be able to cope? Well, I think that sadly some providers won't be able to cope and some will have the resilience to cope. And this is all going to depend on, uh, on where they sit um, within areas, um, within the, the, the structure of their finances. All of that will play a part. But I think sadly what we will see is we'll see some very good long-standing providers throwing in the towel because they just cannot manage the situation anymore. I gather that just as you were coming to do this interview, you were told quite shocking information. Yes, I've, we've been asking for this testing and that includes people who come into our services like district nurses and, um, and inspectors who, who have a right of entry into our services. We've just been told by a provider that an inspector who came in to inspect this service has now tested positive. These inspectors do not have to be tested before they come into your then, home? No, then they, they don't have to be tested un unless they show symptoms. And I think we've been crying out about this because we've got people coming into our services who are untested and it has to be stopped.
because we cannot have these outbreaks. We're doing everything possible to safeguard our residents and our and our staff. And 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 we're being thwarted by by actions that really should be, you know, stopped. Nadra Ahmed. Well, now, as we heard earlier, Public Health England figures show that during the first wave of the pandemic, 18 to 34 year olds with learning disabilities were up to 30 times more likely to die from COVID-19 than the same age group in the general population. So earlier I spoke to Kira Lawrence. She has a learning disability and works for the charity Mencap as an accessible information officer. I began by asking her why people with learning difficulties are so much more likely to die with the virus. There's not enough accessible information about the pandemic. So a lot of people with a learning disability have been going without their normal support because the guidance hasn't been accessible. People haven't been able to have the right support. People haven't had the right access to healthcare that they've needed. And sadly, people with a learning disability have died like lots of other people. And are these particularly young people with learning disabilities, are they people who are at home or people who are in places that should be looking after them? It's a lot of different people. And unfortunately, it's just because of access to poor health care. Um, and sadly, the guidance around Corona has changed all the time. Many people haven't had the right support. People haven't had their normal support. Um, they haven't had support to understand the guidance. They haven't been able to get COVID tests. So unfortunately, it's just led to many, many people dying. And when you see these appalling figures, how does it make you feel? As a person with a learning disability, it's just personally so shocking. I'm very lucky because I've had the right support from my family, but I'm only one person with a learning disability and there are 1.5 million people in the UK living with a learning disability. I can raise my voice and ask for help when I need it, but not so many people like me as are, are as lucky. So if there's another lockdown like this, a third one, are you worried that it will be just as catastrophic as the first two as far as people with learning difficulties is concerned? Sadly, this has made all the health inequalities that people with a learning disability already experience even worse. The inquiry into the handling of the pandemic must really look at why so many people with a learning disability have died from COVID-19 and they need to find out what should have been done differently. Kira, you've been marvellous. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you so much.